Hi Cancer, welcome to December. This is Teresa from tarotbytea.com. And before I get started on your reading, I want to call in some good energy. And I want to say thank you for liking and subscribing to my channel. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. And for those who have ordered readings, I thank you for your support. I've enjoyed working with you, with all of you. And so let's see what's coming up for... Um, December for Cancer. What does Cancer need to know about love and life? Love and relationships. What's important? What is coming up in December? We have a new moon in Sagittarius, which is falling in your sixth house. And we have a full moon in Cancer, your sign, at, uh, on December 22nd. And that should be a pretty special moon because it's uh, it's got some good aspects. It's it could there could be some surprises coming at the end of the month, but good ones, good surprises. So let's see what's happening with Cancer. What does Cancer need to know about love and relationships and anything else that's important? for the month of December. Okay. The Chariot. King of Pentacles. The Eight of Cups. The Nine of Pentacles. The Wheel of Fortune. The Lovers. The Emperor. The Seven of Wands. The Strength. And the Empress. Okay, so you start the month off with the Chariot crossed by the King of Pentacles. So you could be getting, in, you could be involved with an Earth sign, uh, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. The Chariot is a card of victory through focus and discipline. So you could be traveling in December. Um, if you're not physically traveling, oh my God, look at all these major Arcana cards. This is going to be a significant month for you. There's a lot of a fateful... Um, when there's a lot of major arcana in a reading, it, it usually means like it's a fateful time. So the chariot, if your energies have been scattered and you're not sure what direction you're going in, you're going to have to call in those scattered energies and focus on your goal. What does Cancer want in December? What do you want in a relationship? You can't keep, you know your fingers in every pie. You can't be flirting all over the place. You're not going to wind up with anybody. So you have to figure out, who do I want? What do I want? And let me zero in on that goal because you're going to have some choices to make in December. You have the lovers here. But the chariot usually means you're scattered energy. Your energy is scattered. You're not really going for what you want. You're just thinking about it, going all over, the, like you're all over the place. It's like driving all over the road. No one's got this, the hands on the wheel. You know, you got to get your hands on the steering wheel of your life. Now, the King of Pentacles, this could be an earth sign, someone who's very down to earth, very um, security conscious, cares about family. You're wanting someone that's very stable in your life. You, you will enjoy this energy. If you're dealing with an earth sign, um, that's good energy for Cancer. Because, um, you're looking for stability in a relationship. And you could have it with this King of Pentacles. You may have walked away from something in the past. The Eight of Cups. Uh, this represents walking away from something that was once very good but is no longer serving. Um, you're looking for something that has more meaning in your life. So for some of you, you could be walking away from a relationship that just didn't, you know, it's, it changed, things change, and it's not fulfilling anymore, and you're moving on. It could also be that you're moving on in a career situation. Whatever it is that you're doing, if, if it's not giving you what you need, you're going to feel like walking away. You're going to feel like, I want something more for myself. I want security, I want stability, I want love. I don't want to... I'm tired of being alone because the pentacles, you have the nine of pentacles here. 
so you may have um, come into a pretty, um, you might be feeling safe and secure financially, like maybe your job is paying you well, or you know your money problems are under control. Um, so you might have a nice house or um, a good job, but you're feeling lonely. You have the Nine of Pentacles here. This is a card of someone who's alone in the garden. She's enjoying her wealth. She's enjoying her security. She's enjoying her home. But there's no one there to share it with her. She's, you know, only her little bird friend. <laughs> you know, you want to share your life with someone. But this is something that's passing. Um, sometimes this card comes up when you want it, you when you want um, more independence in a career situation. You know, this person has a lot of freedom. She could do whatever she wants. If she wants to buy something, she can buy it. Um, if she's working, she's working um, maybe as an independent contractor or consultant. She has a lot of freedom in her job, but she's lonely. And she's realizing, you know, money isn't everything. It's not enough to have money if I don't have a partner. You know, money can't, isn't there. You know, you want to share your life with someone. You want the things that money can't buy. Um, so you're reevaluating your situation. Now coming up, you have the Wheel of Fortune and the Lovers. So to me, things are changing in December. If you were, if you're alone going into December, you're not going to be leaving December alone, um, unless you screw it up by being too afraid to make a move. Because <laughs> Cancers are, you know, they're afraid of rejection. So if someone approaches you, you, you not, you have to be. You know, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of change. So the Wheel of Fortune means things are changing. So whatever you've been experiencing coming into the month, the winds of change are blowing. The Lovers, this is a card of a major relationship potential. Something that is stable. The Emperor. You can't get better than the Emperor. This guy, this is the perfect guy. This is a guy who, when he says he's going to call, he calls. When he says he's going to do, and that could be male or female. Whatever this, the emperor says, they're going to follow through. They're not one of these fly-by-night types that, yeah, I'll call you tomorrow, and then you never hear from them. No. The emperor is stability. The emperor is responsible, disciplined. The emperor wants to build something that's going to last. And that's what you want, not only in your career, but you want it in your relationship too. So you're looking for someone who's responsible. You might be even dealing with someone who's a little, there might be an age difference. But whoever you're dealing with, it could be a Capricorn, it could be Aries, it could be Scorpio. I mean, this card, it could be an ex-military person. This card is the card of the emperor, the CEO, the boss, someone who's in charge, someone who is in a position of authority. So you could be attracting someone who is in, um, has a, an important position or has a stable career. Um, but it's in your negative thinking sector. So part of you is thinking, well, I would love to meet a guy like this. Like if you're not in a relationship, I would love to have a guy like the emperor, but I doubt if I'll ever meet someone. Or I really like this guy or this woman and she seems, he or she seems really together. They've got their stuff together, but they wouldn't want me, you know. Don't do that to yourself. You have love potential. Don't think negatively. Call in your scattered horses and get them down the right path. You can achieve. You, it's amazing what you can achieve once you believe in yourself and you put your mind to it. And it's, it's like you've got all these major cards. The universe is conspiring for you. This is a fateful time in your life. You need to take action. Your environment. you got the Seven of Wands. You have the upper hand. So if you're thinking like, oh, there's competition. I don't know. I like this person, but I don't know if they like me. There's, you know, there's all these people around them. You have the upper hand. You, they can't hold a candle to you. There's no competition when you walk in the room. You have the upper hand. This is also a card of standing up, standing your ground, fighting for what you believe in. Um, don't worry about the competition. You're stronger than the competition. 
you can achieve, you can overcome whatever obstacles you're facing. So even if there's like a conflict at work and you have to set boundaries and you have to stand your ground, stand your ground, you'll win. If it's a relationship and you're afraid like, you know, that there may be competition, that there might be another person, you know, like wanting the same person you're wanting, you have the upper hand. You are the favored one. So don't, don't go and do any kind of um, negative self-talk. You can do it. You have the strength card. In your um, wish fulfillment sector, so you may have some issues with like your emotions. Like your emotions may go to extremes. Um, you might be dealing with someone that has some type of anger problem. If it's, it could be you. Maybe you don't know how to express yourself without going over the top. You know, maybe the only way you can ask for what you need is if you're angry, if you, you know, rage, rage it out or something. <laughs> so the strength card is learning how to get your needs met by being kind and considerate, not being a bully. This is the card of the bully, like the, the lion is roaring, I want this, I want that. Um, and then you create problems. Um, the strength card sometimes comes up when counseling can be of assistance. So if you're having any emotional um issues where you feel like you're out of control like you're not where you fly off the handle uh where your, your anger gets the best of you uh, maybe just talking to someone would help learning how to get a hold of your emotions not letting yourself go to extremes of thinking and feeling um this could also sometimes this comes up when you're dealing with someone else who's like that maybe you're dealing with someone who has anger problems they don't know how to manage your emotions um, and they just get volatile. Um, in any case, you're, you're either helping someone through a difficult time, an emotional time, or you yourself can use some help. Um, and in that case, you need to reach out to your friends and family. They're there for you. <coughs> so don't be afraid. You've got the Empress card here. Don't be afraid to reach out. This is a card of home, family, abundance. You can have all of these things. Um, this is there for you. The emperor and the empress. This is like the, the perfectly matched couple. So you could be meeting someone. And if you're not in a relationship right now, you could be meeting someone that is very, you're like a soulmate connect, a perfect match. That's what I'm thinking. Someone that's going to, that can actually change your life for the better. Because the lovers is strong. This is a strong connection. But you may have to make a decision about it. Like you're on the fence. Like, do I want this person? So it could be, for some of you, you could be deciding, do I want to stay in a relationship or do I want to leave? Do I want to commit? If you're in a relationship, do I want to commit? Where do I want to go with this relationship? If you're dating more than one person, you may have to choose between two people. Um, whatever it is, you know that the decision you make is a very serious one. And that's probably why you're not making it. <laughs> because you know that once you take that step, you can't undo what's you know what you're doing. So if you're leaving a relationship for someone else, you know once you make that choice and you know, the cat's out of the bag, you can't go back to the past. You know, you have to you're committed. You know, once you walk over that bridge, the bridge disappears. Um, so you have to choose wisely. Give it some thought and choose wisely. But don't procrastinate where you lose your option because not choosing you know is a decision also um, but you're at the edge of this um, potentially significant time in love and the choices you make are very critical very important so choose wisely so let's see um, but look what you can look what the outcome is the empress Home, family, abundance, security, love. Um, it's wonderful. So don't be afraid to make that choice. Choose love. Don't choose fear. Choose love. So we have a new moon December 7th at 2 a.m. in the morning, 2.30, in Sagittarius. It's falling in your sixth house. Um, so that's the house of work and health, employment. So you have a chance now. It could be a new beginning, a new job opportunity. It could also be a new um, health care plan. Like you might decide, like, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to get on a good diet plan or exercise plan. Um, 
the ninth house has Mars, Neptune, and it's squaring this new moon. So there could be some issues with traveling. You might be traveling or education even. If it's a new beginning, you might have to learn some new skills. There's like a little conflict. You're really determined though. With Mars in the ninth house, um, it gives you the energy. Like you really want to change up your world. You want to explore. Mars in the ninth house makes you want to um, explore other cultures. Makes you want to, you know, travel and see new things. And Neptune, um, that's a card of... You might be meeting someone that's going to change your belief system in some way. You're going to be learning different types of spiritual concepts. And you might even butt heads over some of them. But it's going to expand your worldview. You have Mercury in the fifth house. And it's making a grand trine to Chiron. And um, Chiron in the ninth and also um, the North Node, which is in Cancer right now. So the North Node is telling you it's time to get on the path. It's time to heal your wounds. It's time to, uh, and maybe there's a new relationship that's going to help you to heal. Because the Mercury comes in the fifth house, so there's a lot of communications. You could be communicating um, with your children. There could be children involved. You could be doing fun things. Um, Maybe creative writing. You could be working on some type of um, communication project. But whatever it is, it's time for cancer to nurture. It's time for you to nurture yourself. If you've been giving a lot to others, it's time for you to say, you know what? I need to take care of me. I need to do something fun for me. I'm tired of, you know, yeah, it's okay. I'm always there for everyone. I'm mothering everyone. You know, cancer is the world's mother, male or female. When it's time for me to take time out and nurture myself and honor my inner child, you have, and that can be very healing for you. Honor your inner child. Take care of your health. Because if you're not happy, then you're not going to have the energy. If you're not happy and healthy, doing work that you love, nurturing yourself, feeding your soul, you're not going to be able to help others. So now the full moon on December 22nd falls in Cancer. And that's in your first house and your seventh house. That's activating your relationships sector. Um, so there could be a new relationship. Something ends and something new begins because the cancer, it's at the zero degree. So actually for you, you know, because it's at the zero degree, it might even fall in your twelfth house uh, for some, of, some people. So in that case, um, you're releasing some psychological baggage. You're releasing the past. You're releasing, finishing up old karma and getting ready for the new cycle. There's a new cycle coming in. There could also be some surprises around career or or status. So, because Uranus is in your 10th house, um, and it's aspecting this, this moon in a favorable way. So, something could, you, ha you could have some type of career success. The 10th house is also um, a house of status. So you could meet someone that could change your status from single to married or married to single, <laughs> or whatever the case may be. Um, Venus is in your fifth house, and it's trining Neptune, okay? So you could be, and Neptune's in your ninth house. You could be meeting someone through some type of educational project, some type of communication project. You could be meeting someone while you're traveling, or someone from a different culture than you. Someone who expands your world. Not like the girl next door. It's someone who's different. Different than anyone you've ever known. Um, and all of this really... Um, let's see, where is Sagittarius? I feel like you're going to have some career success in December. But you're also going to have potential for love, for a new relationship. So your career, your, your status in the world is changing, both in your career and also in your relationship. You're releasing, you're healing from old pain, you're releasing um, old karma, and you're getting ready for a new beginning with that zero point in cancer, zero degrees in cancer. You're coming into a new cycle. You're going to be coming into a new relationship cycle and also a new health and psychological health cycle. Because I feel like at some point um, it's going to affect your 
you might be dealing with unconscious um, issues, emotions that need to be brought up and released. Um, like negative, you know, self-sabotage. How do I self-sabotage? Stop thinking negatively about yourself. Stop thinking that you're not worthy. You are worthy of love. Um, and you are worthy of happiness. So release whatever you need to release. Move on to something more meaningful. Embrace the changes that are coming your way. And don't get, you know, love is there. Love, abundance, family. Your dreams can come true. Your wishes can come true in December. You can be on a whole new cycle with something stable. Someone who's stable and secure. Not I'm not talking about some whirlwind romance that's going to leave you high and dry. The Pentacles and the Emperor. You're going to be meeting someone that you can be with for a long time. That you can depend on. That will be there for you. So I hope you enjoyed this reading, Cancer. Um, happy decision making. Good luck. Much love, success, and joy, and um, happy holidays, and I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.